Alright guys, so this is gonna be my first breakdown video. It's gonna be if you don't like the pauses, this is not the video for you. Um, if you like the commentary, this is the video for you. It's mostly gonna be pauses. It's gonna be a lot of me talking based on obviously the length of the video alone. You should be able to tell that. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be mostly commentary. I'm gonna be pausing it a lot and kind of breaking down different elements. Um, I've listened to this song many times since I first reacted to it. Um, and so I'll be breaking down some of the musical elements, some of the different elements in the, uh, the music video, um, and also just kind of commenting and giving my thoughts on um, what Ren's saying throughout this video. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. Also, if you guys want more of these, let me know in the comments. And because some people can't stand the pausing, some people are like, I'm only here for the pausing. So I figured I'll just do reactions and then um, I'll for familiarize. I haven't taken notes on this song, um, but I've listened to it enough times and thought about it that I, I think I'll do a decent one. But if you guys want breakdowns and, and different things like that, definitely let me know in the comments and um, let me know what you guys want to see. And, and I'll do it because I do love analyzing art. Let's keep going. Now, first things first, like I said, lots of pauses. Um, this is the similar, it looks like a similar room to where he shot High Ren. Um, and I think that's that's also important because later in this music video, um, there's flash, uh, camera flashes of the doctor essentially being the, the pig bay, as you guys call him. Um, and so I, I do think there's a significant relevance to that because in High Ren, he, he does mention and talk about how he's been, been sick for years. Um, and so let, let's keep going here. There's, there's quite a bit in this one. Uh, uh. Thank you for coming in today. Thanks for seeing me. Looking at your file here, it seems there's a very apparent interplay with your emotional state and your physical body. Have you ever heard of the trauma response? I don't think so. Basically, our bodies can get stuck in a negative feedback loop. Our subconscious can repeat patterns from the past, which can have a pretty drastic downstream effect on our biology. Essentially, your mind is making music. So, she's there. there's a book by a Dutch gentleman named Bessel van der Kolk. I think is his name. Uh, the book is called The Body Keeps the Score. Um, and it is essentially, it, it essentially studies the interplay between a traumatic experience and um, how the body manifests symptoms based on the traumatic experience. And there's a few different uh, based I have I have not I'm not a psychiatrist I'm not a doctor um, I have spent a good amount of time in therapy mental hospitals all kinds of different um, psychiatric experience as a patient um, so but what, what she's essentially talking about is um, there's a few different things first of all um, it when you experience something traumatic um, there's an initial period where you the chemistry in your brain uh, changes. If you're able to get out of that, the best way that doctors have found is through diet and exercise and talk therapy and a mix of those three. Um, if you have to, uh, from a psychiatric, so I'm not even getting into the physical yet, but from the psychiatric standpoint, um, you don't put somebody on medication unless if, you believe it's necessary to initially unshock that traumatic event um, because it does take a, a certain period of time for the brain to adjust to that trauma and and there's different adjustment periods some people they don't get that adjustment because they they don't have the help that they need in order to um, re kind of get those brain chemicals back to where they were initially and I know there's going to be a lot of comments, but there's also a problem with with repeated traumatic experiences, um, because then it's like, well, what if your chemistry was screwed up before the trauma? It's like, well, there's lots of things that I'm not going to cover in this video. Um, but what she's um, talking about, there's a few elements too, and what one of it is is the brain chemistry, and then the physical manifestation. Um, like, um, you might have muscle aches, for instance, if you have a traumatic experience, 
a week later or two weeks later, you might physically start to manifest pains in your in your chest, for instance. Like if you're really stressed and um, I, I don't care if people get mad, certain – like if you're a, a male, you might have – there are different typical physical manifestations as opposed to women. I don't know why. Uh, you can get mad if you want, whatever. Um, there, are, like, so specifically for me, I won't get into gender, but like specifically for me, chest tightness is a big one. If I'm incredibly stressed, I will get physically tense in my chest and I'll pull my shoulders forward and I do a lot of manual labor. And so I've developed a lot of problems in my, specifically my left shoulder. Um, and so that's, just the tip of the iceberg of what she's talking about um but she's this entire video is essentially ren kind of talking about how he was misdiagnosed and they're trying to figure out like uh, okay we can't figure out the physical problem that's wrong with you which was lyme disease and so he would talk to doctors and they're like well maybe you should see a psychiatrist because there's nothing physically wrong with you that we can tell. And so it must be mental and emotional because there is this interplay between the emotional and physical. Uh, now, there's also the entric nervous system, which is essentially brain cells that run from your brain all the way down to your stomach. And so there's a there's a constant feedback loop there. So, for instance, if you're really anxious, your stomach might start to hurt or if you eat a bunch of McDonald's or something or, or like a lot of ice cream and it goes into your stomach, it can make you anxious or it, it, there can be there's this constant feedback loop there. Um, and so the, the brain and the body are, are very, very, very connected. And so Ren is essentially saying he was he was diagnosed. Um, you know, he talked to psychiatrists and they were like, well, you know, can you tell me about um, the things that have happened in your past to try to diagnose this? So uh, l let's keep going here. We have a pretty drastic downstream effect in our biology. Essentially, your mind is <laughs> So, and that's an interesting thing too, because the, the pig bay, I, I don't, We'll just say pig bay, not the pig bay. It sounds a little little nerdy. Pig bay um, walks ran in in the uh, high ren video, um, and I mean there's a flash on the screen of pig bay slitting ren's throat. Um, and so I I don't necessarily know. I I think pig bay represents an external um, problem for ren. Um, although I'm sure there's maybe maybe some back and forth there, but it seems like. Pig Bay represents an external problem. And in this video, it's kind of taking the form of, um, I want to say the medical industry. Um, that That's kind of my interpretation of it. Uh, but we'll keep going. Sick boy, sick boy, bitten by a tank boy, looking for that fix boy. Anabolic steroids, them so post a boy, pass out. White noise, quick fix, make oil. I'm about to break boy. <sighs> so, um I this is weird because I normally do reactions and so I like sort of try to keep the pausing at a minimum. So but we're doing a lot of pauses in this one. Um, you know, he's sick boy, sick boy, bitten by a tick boy, looking for that fix. Um, and so he's he's essentially saying, you know, he's bitten by a tick. Uh, and then he got Lyme disease. Um, it was untreated, and so he's looking for all these fixes. Um, he talks about anab anabolic steroids, which can can kind of help give somebody strength, and there are different medical uses for it. I don't know exactly what they are, uh, but I know there are, uh, you know, steroids are used to, like, like if you have a surgery and your body needs to heal really fast, you can use steroids, and it will hypercharge your system. Um, but then at the end of this line, he's, he mentioned snake oil and how he's kind of, he grabs his head and like, he's kind of losing his mind. Um, and so he's, he's almost saying like this, this is, he feels like this is bullshit. 
and he feels like this is snake oil and it's not doing anything to help it's not solving the problem and he's he's put on all these different medications and i think we're about to get into that aspect of it here too oh what a shame he's in pain have another go take another pill here take a couple more let's see how you're doing in another week or so you'll be feeling worse when the side effects will show so, so okay so a few things here i don't know whether or not this uh woman here represents a physician or a psychiatrist now you can take it both ways in that here take this medication uh here take a couple more let's add a few medications is what that's referring to and this is done both in the medical field with physical illness as well as in the psychiatry field with uh quote mental illness um now, my personal experience has been primarily with the uh, mental side. And so at one point, uh, personally, at one point, I was on five, uh, at least four, four psych meds. I want to say maybe five. I don't know exactly. I'm sure I could find out somehow. But um, one of the things is like... <sighs> It's it's incredibly insane to me that I was prescribed so many different medications, but part of the problem is you're given a pill. And so one of the differences between the way, quote, mental illness, and I'll get into the physical illness a little bit here too, but my understanding is that the big difference between how mental health problems are treated in Europe as opposed to the U.S., is that Europe tip European psychiatry typically they'll now you got a lot of you guys are from Europe so correct me where I'm wrong um how about this good psychiatrists won't put on put somebody on medication unless if there is either has been a years and years of a track record of not being able to change or uh, if there is, and even then there's, there's some, I'm not entirely positive about that, but the main thing is, um, if it's absolutely necessary, they may put you on medication, but they will also give you an exercise diet and talk therapy regimen. Um, and w one of the interesting things I've, I've come across is I talked to, uh, a guy with a PhD in psychology and, and he said, there isn't actually much evidence that doing talk therapy once a week is is it, the suggestion is that once every two weeks is more effective than talking to somebody every week i don't know the study that he was referring to um but personally in my life before i even met this guy and he told me that i had experienced a similar thing and part of part of my confusion was i, I had some therapists they would see me weekly and I, I had one therapist, he would only see me once every two weeks. And I would try to, I was like, hey, could I see you again next week? He's like, nope. No, I, I think two weeks is, is good. And so then I came across this information later and that was better. Now, back to medication. Point being, um, I was initially prescribed a few different medications. Um, well, I started with one and went on that. You know, I was like... The other thing, the, the questions they ask, they're like, well, do you feel better? Like, is it solving your problems? What are your symptoms? It's like, well, you know, I'm a little sleepy. And so they're like, well, okay, we can take you off of this one and put you on another one where sleepiness is, is a less common side effect. And then they do that without even trying to understand, like, they don't know exactly what these pills are doing to your brain. This is, the, this is one of the most mind-blowing things to me is, like medicine i think is a little bit different psychiatry is like you don't know what these pills are doing to someone's brain chemistry like prescribing prescribing something that changed someone's brain chemistry and then taking them off of it and then replacing it and then adding more you hit a certain point where you have no clue what's going on in their brain as far as their specific brain chemistry now i would imagine medicine is probably hopefully a little bit more studied because it's easier to it's easier to get metrics you you can look at you know fecal matter you can study the microbiome a little bit more you can take blood pressure there there are more easily accessible metrics as opposed to the brain there aren't 
as many easily accessible metrics of like you can't I don't believe there's an easy way to test for for cortisol and, and norepinephrine and, and all the all these different brain chemicals. Um, but I would imagine there's a lot of similar problems with the physical side is like if I mean, the, the fact that Ren was prescribed um, medications without completely confirming what the disease was and what the problem was that he had. I mean, it, he could have been sick enough where it was like, just literally give me something. Um, so I don't know his specific situation, but there's definitely major problems in the medical industry and specifically, uh, I've had some pretty rough experiences with, um, psychiatry. It, it just in the amount of volume and the amount of change in, in medications that affect brain chemistry, um, that it's certainly concerning. Um, now I, I've, I'm at a point where I'm on zero medications, um, and it has been a hell of a process to go from the amount of medications I was on to ha having no medication now. It is not an experience I wish on my worst enemy. I don't have a worst enemy, but I wouldn't wish it on him. Now let's, let's, um, let's keep going here. Cause there's, there's so many different things Ren talks about in these, these videos and, um, you know, I, I decided to make a video to just break it down uh, for, for people who want more long form content. Um, so here we go. You're doing in another week or so. You'll be feeling worse when the side effects will Side effect, yeah. Realization, medical patient, losing patience with the process, walking hand in hand with Satan, complications with the medication, information, dehydration, inhalation, aggravation, building up a toleration. Drown, soccer, drown, soccer, drown, soccer, drown. I've been feeling like I'm. So, so, I mean, he's talking about complications with the medication, inflammation, dehydration, um, all of these different things that they could they could make the sickness worse um you know depending on what the medications do and i mean how many medications do they roll out and i mean the pharmaceutical industry it's just, it's just scary to me um it's scary to me and and the amount of money that is made by rolling these medications out to people is is astounding to me and i i genuinely um I, I don't have a, any love for, for Big Pharma. And I know everyone is like, that's not controversial to say anymore. That's not controversial. But, um, you know, as someone who's experienced a li just a fraction of it, um, I, I certainly do not have any, like if I ever met someone and they were like, oh, I'm, a, I'm on the board of a pharmaceutical company. I'd be like, oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Like I, I I've got my own personal feelings about it, but He's talking about, you know, derealization. I mean, losing trust in his in medical patient, losing patience in, in, you know, with his process of treatment. Um, I mean, you know, he's sitting down with somebody who's kind of approaching it like a psychiatrist and his problem was Lyme disease. Um, you know, thank God he found a doctor who figured out what the problem was. And, and, and I'm, you know, thankful he's getting treatment because... I know what it's like to to go to a million different people and have a million different opinions about what's wrong with you and you don't know anything you know something is completely off but you don't know what's wrong with you um and a lot of people who who have um you know mental health problems is is like and i know some people are even gonna say like don't say mental health problems don't say it's, it's like guys you're missing the point like you you're taking away from analyzing the problem by arguing about the terminology i'm just gonna say that flat out if you can't say the certain words in a certain way because it's triggering or because it's in insensitive it's like motherfucker i'm one of them okay so like you you can miss me with the whole like oh that's not the right you know politically correct language it's like i'm the person who gets the say okay I, i'm like I've dealt with this shit, okay? I'm not talking about this as a pull your up, pull yourself up by your bootstraps conservative here, okay? Like I, I've dealt with this shit day in and day out. Um, so all that is to say is, is like, 
Well, let's let's just rewind a little bit here and, and we'll keep going. When the side effects will show Derealization, medical patient Losing patience with the process Walking hand in hand with Satan Complications with the medication Information, dehydration, inhalation Aggravation, building up a toleration Drown, soccer, drown, soccer, drown, soccer, drown I've been feeling like I'm drowning with my feet up on the ground I've been screaming, I've been shouting But I never make a sound I've been looking for a way out But I always seem to drown Is this all making sense, right? Yeah, um, yeah I think so Good what I propose we do is we try to pinpoint the exact experiences from the past that are keeping you stuck. What can you tell me about your childhood? Uh, I can't really think. It's okay yeah. if nothing comes up right away. What I'd like you to do is take some deep breaths with me. In and out. And so that's a typical relaxation technique. Um, if, if, you know, a psychiatrist or so a doctor or somebody has a, a patient who's worked up, uh, specifically on the exhale is, is when these I, I don't know the physiology of it but the exhale is the relaxing part and so this will take a deep breath in and then a slow breath out um and that slow breath it's it's it you know in the military i'm not i'm not a veteran but you know they say shoot on the exhale because it's when your body is most physically rea um relaxed and so it's it's more accurate same relaxation technique if somebody gets worked up in a therapy session or something you know if a therapist might suggest if the if the patient's open to it to say like you know inhale and then exhale and then tell me what's on your mind because in that relaxed state it, you know theoretically is when when you're able to think more clearly um, but if you're not breathing correctly um, I believe there are the, all kinds of different um, physiological things that happen uh, that increase tension and then it's it's it messes with your brain just because everything is connected. Um, by the way, there is a book called Breathe by James Nestor. Highly recommend it. Um, if you have time, even if you don't have time, it's you can get it as an audiobook on Audible. Um, it, it is an incredibly benef beneficial book um to to i i highly recommend it it's about breathing and and how it um affects our body and and it, there are all these different dropping c reactive protein count um in your body by simply by breathing a certain way and, and it goes into the science of it an amazing book highly recommend it breaths with me in and out Tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. I feel like it's not me. It's the world that's sick. We're given everything we need and we commoditize it. We consume, we destroy like we're parasitic. Science tells us that it's suicide and still we come in. So I was actually, I, I, I like that he brings in these really, really heavy, um, it's almost like if you've ever seen Inception or in a lot of different movies, like there, there's a point where like it gets dark and really intense and you're unsure of what's going to happen. And there's a similar musical element that he brings in here. We'll, we'll go. And I... Is that good? Mm -hmm. Now tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. I feel like it's not me. It's the world that's sick. We can so it brings in that dark, intense element. Um, and then that's when he's going, you know what? I don't think I'm the one that's fucked up. I think it's the world that's sick. I think, and, and so he kind of, we'll, we'll play it out here and I'll talk about it a little bit. Given everything we need and we commoditize it. We consume, we destroy like we're parasitic. Science tells us that it's suicide and still we come in. So, so it's, um, you know, he, he talks, mentions a few things here, but he's, he's, I think he's mainly talking about human greed and the constant pursuit of not being satisfied with what we have which he's he's essentially suggesting that it makes us parasitic and and we destroy we we, we destroy things like, like the environment and so when he talks about um science tells us it's suicide and yet still we commit like committing suicide um it, it's really interesting and and i I think that specific line, science tells us it's suicide and still we commit. I, I believe he's talking about the environment there. Um, and to me, it's certainly, it, it would be insane to say that we, we don't have unlimited resources on the planet. 
Uh, I don't know the timing of when our resources would be used up and when all the oxygen would be gone and what, you know, when it turns into a dystopian messed up future. I don't know what point that is, but certainly if we don't change things or, or like it, certainly if we don't slow it down and change the way we're doing things, um, it, we will run out eventually like that. That's inevitable for certain. Um, and, and so I, I think these four lines is he's essentially drawing the, um, just the, the human greed and consumption, um, and, and commodification, if that's a word, um, the, the commodifying of everything, um, in, in kind of the, um, you know, the, the, the desire to profit i mean it, it sounds almost like he's t maybe talking a little bit about c capitalism and human greed um raping the earth of its resources and the science saying like hey this is a problem we need to stop or we we need to like at least change what we're doing here and try to mitigate some of this um and he's saying but still we commit and he's he's essentially saying how all of this is like i don't think i'm the crazy one i, I think it's the world that's insane um, and that, you know, that's, there's definitely something to be said for, um, human greed and, and the destruction that it has. Um, now, I mean, I, I myself, I, I don't like, you know, it, as of late in, um, Western societies, capitalism has come under a major, um, like a lot of criticism and rightfully so, in my opinion. Um, now I'm not like, I'm not really here to make any controversial statements or anything um you know i think there are some some benefits of there there are benefits there are positives and negatives to any system um my the, the major question i've asked because i've had this conversation with um a few different people and the ma main question i ask is like okay um you know i'm being told you know capitalism is evil we need to change it okay let let's let's go with that what is the better solution? Um, and sometimes, you know, often I, I hear like socialism or like I've, I, I've even heard like, you know, I think communism is misunderstood. Like I think we, we should give it another shot and like do it right. And that scares the living fuck out of me. Um, honestly like like i we already have in the u.s personally i know we we've got like elements of socialism already in our in our government and like our society um with medicaid and like making medical uh care more available to uh, lower income people um you know i i i i'm a i like the idea of, of many socialistic concepts um what does scare me is the, the idea I, I've heard people my age say stuff like I think we should I think communism's misunderstood I feel like it gets a bad rap like I feel like we could do it right and I'm just like I put so personally I put communism on the same like for me it's a horseshoe there's fascism and then like I don't know like a lesser form of nationalism and then like you know conservative and then you know independent or middle ground and then democratic and then socialism and then like communism and so for me fascism is like on the same as communism as far as damage to humans and so yeah i don't know i i've heard some some i don't agree with it at all like it's a little bit of a scary thought to me i like i'm just as opposed to communism as i am of fascism um, and I think a lot of reasonable people are in the same boat where like the, the, like the most vocal and insane people in the U S at least get like the political attention. Um, cause like no one really wants to hear like, Hey, let's find a measured solution that might take more time and it's going to be stressful to discuss it, but let's find a middle ground that makes sense. It's not a sexy idea. It's not a sexy concept. And so the people who get the most attention are like oftentimes like so the Argentinian president who was recently elected who like, you know, he does press conferences and pulls out a chainsaw or whatever he does. And, 
you know, he gets on their national television saying, uh, what, what did he say? He's like, you know, he's like, leftists are shit. Like, if you go against them, they'll literally effing kill you. Like, on national television, you know, he's say, saying, like, ni mierda, like, which is like, you know, they're, they're shit. Like, they're terrible, like, F, you know, F leftists, more or less, in Spanish. Um, on national television, like, he's a character. Um, but it's, it's like... The, the rational middle ground doesn't tend to get like the much attention and the other thing is like the rational like people who are both like yeah let's not go too extreme either way we're all just kind of like sitting at home while the crazies are out fighting with each other and you know on social media and like you know bombarding each other with comments and out making speeches and we're all just kind of like yeah i mean i have priorities in life like i gotta go to work i gotta you know family this and the third whatever i don't really have the time to like fight these two crazy insane opposing ideas um I, i'll i know i it's gonna be a long one guys but um you know if if people don't want to listen to it that's okay me it's the world that said we're given everything we need and we commoditize it we consume we destroy like we're parasitic science tells us that it's suicide and still we come in i'm not sick we are sick we are standing on a cliff also i i um i i had an interesting thought recently i'm gonna share it because i think maybe some people might think it's interesting um i read a few different articles i got pneumonia recently i read a few different articles about doing cardiovascular exercise whilst sick and very interestingly, I, f I read a few different articles. Some doctors said, don't do it ever at all. Some doctors said, do it. And some doctors said, maybe near the tail end of your sickness, there could be some benefits. That is for a very simple question of, should you run, you know, exercise, run while you're sick from a scientific medical standpoint? And there were these varied opinions on it and i thought to myself i was like well so what about the the scientists that we call crazy who say like well climate change isn't as bad as we think it is i'm like and i'm not saying one's right or one's not but i am saying we should leave the question open if i'm reading three articles about one doctor says you should do cardio while you're while you have a you know viral and sinus infection or whatever and then one doctor says you shouldn't and then there's another, another doctor who says yeah i mean you know you could try it out and see if it helps like if there's that much varied opinion on such a simple question of should you run while you're sick like you know well i'm not i'm not saying like i'm not saying i'm not a climate change denier is things are weird the seasons are weird the seasons don't aren't the same as they were when i was growing up there's all these it's there's change for sure like 100% um but like my question is like well if there's so much debate and variation on this such a seemingly simple question is cardio while you're sick like they're, they're definitely we shouldn't shut down opinions like dissenting opinions of scientists who say like um you know may I don't you know can we the, the the thing in science is correlation does not equal causation meaning uh just because there's a correlation doesn't mean that it is you know inextricably linked together and that a equals b like just because uh b changes when a changes does not mean a changes because of b now you know once again i'm not saying i'm not here to even make statements i'm simply here to say like you know let's think let's talk about it let's be rational and let's not just shut people down because they have an opinion that we view as as like wrong i don't know to me it's it's i'm not saying anything crazy but who knows i might i may lose subscribers over this but that's okay i mean this is me this is just my thoughts i'm willing to be wrong i'm willing to dare to think and, and sound like an idiot but let's keep going thing we need and we commoditize it we consume we destroy like we're parasitic science tells us that it's suicide and still we come in i'm not sick we are sick we are standing on a cliff in the name of progress we jump off the precipice i'm not sick i'm the virus you're the virus hypocrite how can you sit there with a smile on and tell me that i'm sick interesting yeah so and he's saying in the name of 
progress and progression and and bettering of technology and bettering of medicine and bettering of of the human race he's saying we're we're neglecting the earth and so i believe it was eden i want to say where i, I want to say it was eden where he talked about like kind of the symbiotic natural balance of the earth and that's a very real thing and the modern human in the western world um who lives in an apartment or a, a building or in a neighborhood with condensed houses we live the most unnatural lives of anyone who's ever been on the planet earth um now if you went to like somalia or zimbabwe or ethiopia um you would find human beings in the same day and age who live much closer to the biological uh natural biological life of a human being that's existed for far longer than this unnatural life that we live now um and th the idea is in the name of progress and um i mean you, you look i don't have to like walk to a bush and pick the bush and collect it to eat blueberries i can drive to a grocery store buy blueberries and eat them um it's it's very unnatural it's very new and Ren's proposing that like in the name of progress it's like okay is it good to have easily accessible food to more people um so that more people can live yeah for sure Ren's proposing that in the name of progress well what what other steps are happening there well there's the transportation of the blueberries from for you know wherever they came from so you have a semi presumably driving it from one location to another i mean you have plastics that are manufactured to hold the blueberries in um you have you know people unloading it you have me getting in a car which is putting out emissions driving to a, to a grocery store um to i mean a, you know a car is you know probably not good for the environment for sure um i, I can't think of how it would be good for the environment to have a, a vehicle that combusts fossil fuels to project itself like it, it it can't be good um i'm not anti-car at all i'm not anti-car i'm not like anti-technology but there's certainly you need to acknowledge like be aware that that it's probably not good um now so all those steps they're unnatural and they are progressive in that it's like well let's make food easily accessible to more people like that that's a great um concept that's a very progressive concept um famine has been one of the biggest problems for the course of humanity famine uh war and disease have been the three leading causes of death uh, in the human race and so you know if we can eliminate famine great but ren's proposal is that in the name of that progress um you know what at what cost and so i think what, when we see the seasons changing when we see um you know oceans rising when we see temperatures rising when we see these these different um markers of something something larger happening i do think it's insane to say there's no connection between like i i don't think it's a coincidence that we developed uh jets that i mean talk about like you know definitely not good for the environment jets and airplanes i don't think it's a coincidence that once we've developed jets and, and airplanes and they're flying more than they ever have that we see these things also rising at the same time i don't necessarily think that's a coincidence um now does does correlation mean exact causation i i don't know i don't know but it would seem insane to me to say there's zero connection like that's nuts to me um anyway let, let's let's keep going here guys i you know i hope somebody finds this video and is, is able to enjoy it and and whatnot i don't expect to get many views on this but um i'm doing it because i do enjoy talking about these concepts and some people said like you know i, I would like to just kind of hear your thoughts and like the way you think about things so i you know I, I have wrong thoughts too guys so if i'm wrong about something or like if i said something wrong you know i expect to be called out on it this is the internet that's what happens but um i'm not afraid to be wrong i'm not afraid to speak my mind and just kind of like think about things out loud i'm really just thinking out loud so 
Let's keep going. I'm sick. I'm the virus. You're the virus, hypocrite. How can you sit there with a smile on and tell me that I'm sick? Sick boy, sick boy, looking for a fix, boy. Push it down in public, quick toes for the pick, boy. Record label meetings that come on the fire, your gift, boy. Why are you so upset? Don't you want to be a rich boy? Fuck no. I actually love the part that comes up here, but, um, you know, he's, he's, and interestingly enough, he's, he's talking about the, that the, they're commodifying his gift of, of musical talent and it takes a toll on him. You know, the, the destructive nature of, um, the commodification of things, it's, it's definitely something to think about. Um, I'm not, I'm not a philosopher, so I'm not like, you know, I, I don't know that I'm going to have like brilliant thoughts about this, but I'm an average regular person who does like to think. And so sometimes I occasionally have good thoughts, but, um, it's definitely something to like consider is that, you know, the human greed and putting uh, capital gain, uh, financial money, uh, p putting that uh, above other people and, and their emotions and considering what it does to them. I definitely think that's that's not a good thing because, you know, I've, I've worked at places where um, the money was put over the people and I hated it and it was miserable and I had no respect for my bosses. Now, I've also worked at companies where you're rewarded if a job gets done early or, or you know, your work is appreciated and they understand um, that, that you're a human, that you're coming into work and that it's difficult. Um, they, ha they have standards, but they also recognize, like, if you have something happen and you need to take three days off because you know, a traumatic event happened or whatever it is, um, you know, recognizing that like the boss's bottom line and the money going into his pocket is not put above the employees and the workers. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, it's definitely something to think about and consider. Looking for a fix, boy. Push it down in public, quick pose for the pick, boy. Record label meetings that come on the fire, your gift, boy. Why are you so upset? Don't you want to be a rich boy? Fuck no, industry is cutthroat. I've been doing bits by myself, swimming backstroke. Walking on a tightrope, rapping with a slit throat. The way that we persist is like the ending of a bad joke. As the people evolve. It's it's inter yeah I mean what he's what he's saying is inter he's been doing this you know with a slit throat and like you know it's very interesting to think about um but he also just mentioned oh, what was it the way that we persist persist is like the ending of a bad joke like if you've ever like if yeah if you've ever heard the ending of a bad joke and it's a bad joke and they just like keep going like it's not really funny and then they just keep going and try to make it funny it's just like oh god like stop. You need to stop and end the joke because it wasn't funny in the first place. Myself swimming backstroke, walking on a tightrope, rapping with a slit throat. The way that we persist is like the ending of a bad joke. As the people evolve, we're complacent to assailants and we do what we vote. Counterintelligence, a sight to behold, rape the earth of all resources. I don't know if he's saying counterintelligence, a sight to behold, or count of intelligence, a sight to behold. I, I still don't know. I've listened to this many times. I still don't know what exactly he's saying there. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll finish this out here. It's like the ending of a bad joke. As the people evolve, we complacent to assailants and we do what we told. So so interesting. So he's got Pig Bay sitting there, like kind of examining him closely, and he's sitting there, like um, you know, complacent to assailants, meaning like you know, su submissive to an assailant. Um, you know, doing doing what we're told by criminals, essentially, just kind of playing our role in, in doing what we're told by bad people, bad human beings who do not have our best interests in mind whatsoever. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting to think about because what he's saying bleeds into all facets of life. To me, it's not just like, you know, when you think about the environment or, or like work, it's like, you know, it's, it's certainly, um, if somebody has a certain social status, like for instance, if you, if you met the prime minister or the president or the, the ruler of your, uh, country or like even the mayor, if, if you just found out right now. For instance, the mayor was at your door, knocked on your door, and for some reason, you know, there was an announcement, the mayor is at your door. 
you would go there and they have a certain amount of social status where if they came and they were like, hey, I know your name and I would really like you to do this for me and it would be really grateful. I would like you, let's just say they want you to work for their campaign or something. And, you know, it required you to stay up and do late nights and drink coffee at three in the morning to finish a speech for them or whatever. Um, you know, there's there's a certain amount of like social status where you might feel pressured to do it, even though it's destroying you and not good for you as a human. So the question does have to be asked is like, does that person care about your physical health if they want you to stay up late and drink coffee and get it done no matter what, you know? A very weird example I just brought up, but um, yeah, d definitely something to think about. With our slit the way that we persist is like the ending of a bad joke. As the people evolve, we're complacent to assailants and we do what we're told. Counterintelligence is sight to behold. Rape the earth of all resources and we bleed it for gold. And we bleed it for wealth, we bleed it for fame. But when you bleed it, can you tell me what the fuck will remain? And I'm bleeding myself, I bleed in my brain. While I'm bleeding, I'm the reason, because I'm doing the same. And so that, yeah, so th th that's definitely a good way to finish it out um, because he, he recognizes that, well, so let's just start, you know, bleed the earth of all the resources, um, you know, bleed it, bleed it for wealth and we bleed it for fame. Um, and he's saying, you know, I'm the reason it's bleeding because I'm doing the same. Um, and so he's essentially acknowledging his, his participation I mean, you know, Ren didn't swim to Canada. You know, he flew to Canada. Um, so it's, and that's not my way of like criticism. You know, I'm not trying to shit on him as a human being in any way because he took a plane. Um, but he's acknowledging, so there's two ways you could take that is he's acknowledging it in the within the music industry um, that he's kind of partaking in an in, in industry where, you know, there is a goal to make money. And, you know, these record meetings where there's, they're trying to commodify his gifts. So he's kind of acknowledging it like that already. And then there's also the acknowledgement that, um, I mean, I have, I have this can right here, um, you know, that I've been drinking liquid out of um, because I enjoy it. I, this is not necessary. It's, it's an energy drink. It's not necessary for me to drink. Uh, I don't know what went into making this can. Um, I don't really know what happens after it goes in a garbage can or a recycling bin. Um, I don't know. Now, I can guess this probably isn't good for the environment. So I, like, even the, like, let's, let's say it, it gets recycled and let's say in the recycling bin it goes. So in, the reason I'm even saying the recycling thing, guys, is in the U.S., I've talked to some people and... A, a, a friend of mine, um, she's really into recycling and she said only a certain percentage of things that get put in recycling actually end up being reused and recycled. A lot of it ends up going into a landfill because it can't be reused for some reason. Um, I don't know the science of it. Um, that's the reason I'm, I'm even bringing that up. So like, let's say it gets recycled and everything great. What I don't even know what it took to make this can and to put the different colors and paint and lettering on this. I don't even know, like, like what is how much, um, how much the machine that put the label on here was used and what, what I don't know the inner workings of any of it, but I know I part, I do partake in um these things that ultimately you know there's only going to be a limited amount of cans that humans can make before we have to figure out a different way to make them and then bleed that resource and so to kind of point to what ren's saying and it definitely seems like there's a um there, there's a cycle to it and he's he's acknowledging that he takes part in it um you know because he's doing the same and so we, we all definitely um partake in it it's like if you wanted to contribute zero to like i mean when you exhale you exhale carbon dioxide which i believe is i don't know if that's i think it's a greenhouse gas but like when you exhale you exhale carbon dioxide so it's like unless if if you wanted to contribute zero to the climate changing like unless if you're literally willing to stop breathing which i'm not suggesting whatsoever 
but I'm, I'm just trying to make the point is like we are, you know, to exist as a human in this day and age, unless if you want to go live in a tent or not even a tent, if you want to just go in the woods and build like a little stick like teepee or something and sleep under that and find a berry tree nearby like you're pretty much going to participate in what he's talking about to an extent um you know in the name of progress doing um certainly some level of harm to the environment in the world and the natural symbiotic relationship that has existed um i don't take that um conclusion and run with it um i i am like there's a new thing um where like a humanist i guess or something is where like there's so many new terms nowadays i can't keep up with them all but i'm definitely like a humanist like i i favor the human race as opposed to like um i believe a human life should be preserved over like if you weird weird scenario but like let's say someone had a gun and they were going to shoot a dog or a human i and they had to shoot one i would say shoot the dog save the human um you know i i'm one of those people because <laughs> there are people nowadays who they, they're they not you know they're like anti-human almost which is interesting um it's not my thing i don't take yeah i under like i resonate with what ren's saying but i definitely don't take it to the extreme of like we need to get rid of humanity um <laughs> which now with how ai is advancing it's like well maybe maybe that's the next phase of evolution that would be insane but um i'll wrap this one up guys but i did want to just do a breakdown this is my first one so it's super rough let me know where i sucked <laughs> let me know where i did well but i did put the you know disclaimer in the beginning of the video like this is going to be a long one where i'm just basically pausing breaking it down and talking so some of you have asked for it and so this is my first one and um yeah, we'll see how it goes, and I might be doing some more of these because I kind of I kind of liked this, um, and I hope some other people like it as well. Uh, but you guys take care, stay safe, and take care of your loved ones wherever you're watching the video from. Thank you.